In Calgary, Henry Burris, Jerome Ginla, and David Beckham are well-known names. But do you know about Charlotte Mitchell, Alex Wren, and Andrew McBride? Welcome to the 11th Hour. I'm your host, Melissa Gervais, and I will be discussing what marks off an elite athlete from a regular athlete. Turn on the television or surf the internet to a sports channel or team site, and you'll see many athletes at the top of their game. The second group of three athletes I mentioned at the start of the segment may not be well known unless you follow their sports. However, all are considered elite athletes. Why do they deserve this title? I pulled a few sports fans with the question, what is your definition of an elite athlete? Here are their answers. Someone who is willing to work well with their peers, because of course it is a sport, just works hard and knows what, knows what they have to do to win such a game. A highly intelligent and coordinated individual in whatever sport he does and transcends other sports as well. An elite athlete would be someone who reaches a certain level of play in any type of sport. The definition of an elite athlete, according to Sagan's Medical Dictionary, is a person who is currently or has previously competed as a varsity player individually or on a team, a professional, national, or international level player. These individuals are at a higher risk of injury due to the harsh demands placed on their body and psyche by themselves, coaches, and others around them. Landon Talley knows this all too well as he is one of the talented receivers on the Calgary Stampeders football team. Talley speaks on the accountability of the athlete as well. Able to come to the field, prepared to put on a show for a whole bunch of fans, but also be able to keep that focus to know that when it comes down to him doing his assignments, he will get that job done. Focus is a key element, and it transfers away from the game itself. It's the single-minded dedication by the athlete to one sport, which takes them to the next level. While it may look easy, time management becomes a key component, as ACAC women's hockey coach Scott Rive tells us. It's a huge commitment, never mind obviously what they need to put in on top of uh, academically to be successful in their program and ultimately to stay eligible to play and you know you add that up you're probably pretty close to almost 30 hours I would say 20 to 30 hours a week in addition to what a normal student would do from an academic standpoint. We now know what defines an elite athlete. The next segment will take you through the unglamorous side of being an elite athlete. Stay tuned for part two where I talk to athletes and coaches about the commitment needed. This has been the 11th Hour. I'm Melissa Gervais. It's easy to get caught up in the fantasy with sports celebrities glamorized in the media. What you don't see is the hours they've put in getting to the level that they're currently at. Welcome to the 11th Hour. I'm your host, Melissa Gervais, and I will be discussing with current and former athletes and coaches just how much effort and dedication is involved to stay at the elite level. All of the athletes I spoke with had the same three words come up when I asked them about their workload. Commitment, work ethic, and dedication is expected of them. I asked Olympic ski jumper Charlotte Mitchell about why she puts in the long hours pretty amazing like it's pretty much out of this world how sweet the feeling is it's just like flying if you can imagine how that feels it's fairly close related like charlotte carla mcleod doesn't forget the dedication and choices she's made to reach her goals the strong work ethic in the sport of hockey has helped her on the national team win two gold medals as well as paid for her post-secondary education mcleod has segued a great olympic career into a coaching position with the mount royal cougars she shares the reason for her success and what she hopes her players keep when their playing days are through. I think at the end of the day, just be a good person and anything you're going to commit to, commit to it and work hard. And uh, hopefully that's what our group's gaining and, and when they graduate from our program, they'll, they'll have with them. One of the biggest misconceptions elite athletes face is the public's perception of celebrity. Most people believe that if you're on television, you lead a really interesting life. With all the time spent on practices, team meetings, and regular real life stuff, there's really not much time left over for these athletes to live up to the hype. Nick Lewis, like the rest of his teammates on the Calgary Stampeders football team, is just a regular guy doing normal things. However, he believes it's the practice of your position and sport which separates the elite from the good. A lead athlete is somebody who can go out and consistently be good at what they do. Uh, catching the ball consistently, running great routes consistently, 
uh, doing the things that you're supposed to do on a consistent basis. And the, uh, the more consistent you can do it, the better you become. It doesn't matter whether you're a pro athlete or a university varsity athlete. The dedication to practice and being a well-rounded person is the same. It takes a committed person to choose this role. I asked Kendall Kilgore, goaltender for the Mount Royal Cougars, how much more work it is to be a varsity athlete. It doesn't matter exactly what level you play, but if you want to play in the big leagues or you want to play university hockey, you got to put more effort into it. So I know growing up, you maybe you miss out on going out with your friends one night or going to a school dance. So there's lots of stuff that you have to give up to, to become an elite athlete. Stay tuned for part three, where I talk to these and other sports professionals about the transition from elite athlete to regular person, who they really are when the cameras and lights turn off. This has been The 11th Hour. I'm Melissa Gervais. Elite athletes have a way of drawing you into their world. It's easy to forget they're real people when you watch or experience their feats firsthand. Welcome to the 11th Hour. I'm your host, Melissa Gervais. In part one and two of Elite Athletes, I spoke with athletes and coaches on what makes an elite athlete as well as the dedication and training to stay at this level. In part three, I will be discussing with current and former athletes what it's like when the spotlight turns off and they go back to their regular life. Being an Olympic athlete is an amazing honor. Winning two gold medals is not something many athletes can do in their careers. Carla McLeod did it with the Canadian women's hockey team. I asked her about the publicity the team received around big events and competition. She, like other athletes I spoke with, was very humble and candid about her role during these events. What I find interesting is nothing changes within me. You know, I am who I am. I'm Edna and Jerry's daughter and, you know, uh, I'm a sister and an aunt. And those are the things that matter to me. And, Olympic year or non-Olympic year, it, it doesn't make any difference. And you know, to me, it's just exciting to see the game grow. And whether or not my name's mentioned in an article or not makes zero difference. Cassie Campbell Pascal shares the sentiment with her former teammate, saying it made her uncomfortable being in the public eye more than her teammate. Elite athletes come up against some tough obstacles. Charlotte Mitchell's had to fight to get her sport recognized by the International Olympic Committee. Mitchell happened to be one of the youngest athletes to take on the IOC and win. She says it was very hard to be excluded from the game so long. Barely anyone knows that women ski jump at all. It was kind of a shocker. and. I think it was even more that we weren't in the Olympics, which definitely was a struggle to get in and still compete to the highest level. One of the biggest moments in an elite athlete's career is retirement. Some athletes hold a news conference and make a big production over it, and some are forced to retire due to injuries. There are still some who choose to retire quietly to pursue other things. Carla McLeod turned a brilliant hockey career in the National Women's Program into a stellar coaching position. I asked her what was the most rewarding moment since the switch from being on the bench to being behind the bench. They're a lot of fun, so to go out there every day and, and just have a good time with them and you know, ultimately show them a thing or two about, you know, little things about, well, when I played, I would try this and, and they can do the same thing. And I, I find that really rewarding, especially when it clicks and you see that spark in their eye and it's like, oh, they've got it. Many current athletes also have other commitments to deal with, along with the highly demanding training schedule of their sport. Brad Zapoli of the Calgary Stampeders Football Club says it's hard for him to balance everything that's going on. Just a normal guy. For me, I mean, I'm, I'm a student still. I still got one more year left. Nothing special, no, no more special than anyone else who's walking around the streets. You just have to be good at one thing, and that's, that's something in sports. Just the way that they could be good at something in business or, or whatever their trade is. When you really think about it, elite athletes are regular people who have the dedication to do extraordinary things in the realm of sport. Whether they are getting paid to play or funding their training themselves, elite athletes deserve the moniker. For the 11th hour, I'm Melissa Gervais.